Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to Google for India 2022. Google's mission in India is to make the internet helpful and safer for a billion Indians and empower India to become a leading digital economy. To this end, in 2020, we have announced the India Digitization Fund, a $10 billion commitment from Google to deploy towards building strategic pillars of India's digital economy. Moving forward, as part of our IDF investments, we'll be targeting support for early stage companies with a particular focus on women-led entrepreneurs. The Indian tech industry this year is nearly $230 billion, its highest ever, and set to become a trillion dollars in few years. The internet user base has grown to over 700 million. India is on a momentum that will bring nearly a billion Indians online by 2025. However, as you can see, there is a consistent drop-off as we move from internet access to subsequent levels of deepening internet use. So how do we make this journey equitable, inclusive, and safe for all users and for not just some? The answer lies in the power of AI, artificial intelligence. By harnessing the power of AI, we can democratize opportunity by building ramps through language, video, and safety that help every Indian make full use of technology to progress in life. I want to close by saying that we at Google feel privileged to participate in this journey with India as it enters the age of AI. Three years ago, we started Google Research India with the mission to solve uniquely Indian challenges and create meaningful impact for a billion Indians. A nation of over 1.4 billion people, we speak over 1,500 languages, all in different dialects and accents. To build an AI-based model that understood all these nuances, we would first need to understand those nuances ourselves. So, in collaboration with the Indian Institute of Science, we have embarked on a journey called Project Varni, where ISC will aim to collect speech data from people across 773 districts of India. We are pleased to collaborate with Google on Project Varni, an effort that is fundamental to creating inclusive AI technology that truly reflects India. We have already started open sourcing this data by our website, and we also hope to add it to Bashini, India's national language translation uh, mission. Next, let's talk about agriculture. I'm thrilled to share that our teams are using our remote sensing technology and advanced AI capabilities to develop a model that can give a holistic overview of India's agricultural landscape. Our model processes the satellite image and can identify fields down to their shape. Not just fields, it can also identify natural and man-made water bodies. We are planning to set up a data exchange platform which will initially focus on agriculture. The work done by the Google team will be a critical part of this. The potential is undoubtedly exciting. Now, let's look at healthcare. We all know too well, prescriptions are mostly handwritten, hard to read, and even harder to remember. Let's take this copy of my prescription, open a camera, and point at it. Let's see if our model can highlight the medicines correctly. There you go. At Google Cloud, we're working across industries. Retail, gaming, security, financial service, and a host of others, where we are helping them transform their journeys, their digital transformation journeys, atop open networks to bring value to 1.4 billion Indians. There are 23 lakh individuals in our country with tuberculosis. So we're working with Google on uh, an AI piece where the X-ray images are analyzed. So this project has the ability to, at the touch of a button, every X-ray being viewed by a radiologist anywhere in the world, you'll be able to say yes, TB, no TB.
We've seen how AI can have a transformative impact, but key to all of this is a responsible approach. I'm proud to announce that Google has invested a million dollars in grants to IIT Madras to establish the first of its kind multidisciplinary center for responsible AI. For me, what really stands out is the commitment we make in all of our work towards inclusion. When we talk of bias, one of the most pronounced and prevalent ones is that around gender. I'm very proud to announce Project Bindi, an effort to evaluate and mitigate fairness issues in publicly available natural language processing models. I'm very optimistic that with information, women will empower themselves with knowledge and opportunity and even search for change today. India is at the forefront of visual and voice search adoption globally. So we reimagine Google Search with Lens to help you find information about what you see using your camera or an image. And a great example of this is with multi-search. So now I can take a picture of the fabric and Lens does its thing to start with by showing me many similar fabrics. But now with multi-search, I can also add a text query, just add the word dress. And just like that, I can now get to explore many dresses with a similar pattern. Multi-search is available in English today, and we're very excited that we'll be launching this in many Indian languages in the coming year, starting with Hindi. Another critical form of visual information, particularly in India, is video. We are piloting a new feature that lets you search directly within the videos. You'll be able to search for anything mentioned in it and find exactly what you're looking for in the moment. We're leveraging our advanced machine learning based translation models and a cross-language search technology to introduce an India-first innovation, making search result pages bilingual for people who prefer it that way. Now, we'll proactively serve high-quality search results in the local language alongside English results within the one box, top stories, and people also ask sections. We've already started rolling this out in Hindi, and we'll be expanding this to other Indian languages, including Tamil, Telugu, Marathi, and Bengali in the coming year. It's estimated that 250 million people worldwide have non-standard speech. So following years of research, we decided to create Project Relate, an app that's custom trained to unique speech patterns of people with non-standard speech. We've been piloting the app with English users in India, and today I'm happy to announce that we're planning to expand this pilot to Hindi users in early 2023. That in 2021, YouTube's creative ecosystem supported more than seven and a half lakh full-time jobs and contributed... <laughs> and, and, and contributed 10,000 crores to India's GDP. Today, we are excited about supporting our healthcare partners on YouTube with Allowed, which makes dubbing as easy as one, two, three. One, Allowed transcribes. Two, it translates. And three, it dubs the original content. We also want to make it easy for viewers to consume content in their preferred language. Let me show you how it works. So dengue is actually a viral infection that is transmitted by our enemy, the mosquitoes. And the मच्छर द्वारा संचालित होता है। डेंगी के चार विभिन्न प्रकार हैं। एक विशिष्ट साल के दौरान डेंगी का एक ही वेरिएंट, एका विशिष्ट वर्षात एक डेंगी का स्ट्रेन सुधा संपूर्ण संसर्ग तुमचा शरीरात पसरवने साथी कारणी बुढ़थरतो। And it's called courses, where difficult concepts get simplified, structured, organized, and explained to you one step at a time. Where reading materials are available at every step to enhance your learning. Where, of course, you can learn in the language of your choice. And all these learning experiences are not just limited to studies or academic content and goes beyond to your vocational interests and hobbies. Courses will soon be available on YouTube in India across all types of learning. And it represents a new monetization option for our creators. Today, we're continuing to innovate to protect you so every day you're safer with Google. Our responsibility in keeping users and the internet safe 
starts with security. Security starts with our infrastructure by building automatic protections across our products and ecosystems to deliver safe experiences to all users. I am proud to announce that so far we have trained more than 40,000 developers, giving them the critical knowledge, tools, and awareness to build safety and security from the get-go. Which is why new features like Google Pay's transaction search are important. It allows users to voice their queries in natural language. For example, I could say, grocery spends last week, and Google Pay automatically understands the different parts of my query as time periods, categories, and merchants, and presents the relevant results in a simple, intuitive way. How do we ensure that users say, stay safe while transacting online? As soon as a transaction is initiated, Google Pay checks its safety engine to determine if the transaction is safe. We literally nudge our users to think twice with haptic feedback. We now use our smartphones to store documents, including government IDs. Over time, these start to accumulate on our devices. So I'm happy to announce an advanced AI solution to identify and recognize these important documents on your phone. The model simply scans your phone and finds the most important documents. Safety was a big part of the design process for this feature. Only you can access these documents, and all of our machine learning models run on the device, so no one, nor Google, nor third-party apps can view these files. We thought, wouldn't it be really great if people also had access to their verified government documents? So we reached out to the DigiLocker team. We expect that this integration of DigiLocker and Google will drive smoother and ubiquitous access to digital documents in a safe and secure manner for all our users. Over the last eight years, the vision of Digital India has really taken us to a level where we have a very successful, absolutely scalable India stack. AI is going to play a very big role in India's uh, uh, tech story going forward. How do we bridge the gap between people who speak one language and the other? Then making credit accessible to the people at the bottom of the pyramid. That's going to be a major, major task ahead in which we will be using AI. And that's going to ride on the success that we have already had in terms of the payment system, the identity system, and a very rapid adoption of technology uh, across different sections of the society and across all geographies. Every time I come, you know, the sophistication of the India startup ecosystem, uh, you know, it's measurably improving. Part of what we have done with the India Digitization Fund is increasingly focusing on uh, our investments towards startups from India, like Glance. And, you know, these companies are getting noticeable scale. So I think those are all ways by which policies can help and we can play a role as well. I'm very bullish about it over time. In my view, we have to find out a very balanced way of absorbing technology because technology brings many new opportunities with it. It also brings many new challenges with it. And uh, in today's world where information is ubiquitous, in India the cost of data is so low and adaption of technology is so rapid, how do we create a legal and regulatory structure which is in tune with times, which matches India's needs, which is built around our realities. To me, it makes sense that you know, tech needs responsible regulation. I think it's important for countries to think about how, how to best safeguard uh, its citizens, be it privacy, be it security. And so I think it's an important phase. And you know, so we, we are engaging constructively. I think India has a leadership role to play here. And it's important to make sure you're balancing, putting in safeguards for people, you're creating an uh, innovative framework so that uh, companies can innovate on top of a certainty uh, in the legal framework. I would say that think on population scale, think on global scale because all the constructs, all the uh, basic components which are needed for creating a very big scale solution are today available. So don't think small, think big. I definitely uh, agree with that. Well, tech is much broader than just programming or uh, engineering alone. You know, the more people can get 
involved uh, across all walks of life, I think tech will be better for society.